Welcome to the tutorial video for the No Beginning Chain Granny Ripple Afghan. And this is not meant to replace the instructions in the written pattern, and you can find the link for the written pattern in the, the description of this video. This is meant to supplement that written pattern, but I wanted to just clarify some of the things that are in the pattern in this video just to kind of clear up any confusion. It is a very different technique to make a crocheted item without a beginning chain. And it's great if you have bumpy yarns like homespun yarns or the boucle yarns that have the, the very textured yarns because it's really hard to go back and try to find beginning chains to make stitches in for that foundation row. And we avoid it with this style of pattern. I'm not using a textured yarn for the video, however, because I want you to see what I'm doing. So I'm using just a regular worsted yarn. So to begin, we're going to build, instead of having a big long chain at the beginning of this blanket, we're going to build little chain spaces that are made of three chains and a triple crochet. And we'll start that by doing three chains and then we're going to do a triple into the very first chain that we made. This will be the only chain that you have to find for this blanket. After this, everything, all the stitches are all going to be made into chain spaces. So that's our first triple and three chain space that I made right there. I'm going to chain three, and then I'm going to do a triple, and I'm going to go into this space. It's going to go around the triple that I just made kind of at the base of it. So now I have two of these spaces. And as they go along, what you'll find is you'll have these chains on the bottom, and then on the top you'll have these triples. So I'm going to do another chain three, and then going to do a triple into the last space that I made, the second one. And again, it's going to kind of go around the, the top of that triple that I just made before. So now I have three. And going to continue to make these. For this particular blanket, the number of these that you want is a multiple of six plus one extra. And that will give you the right number of spaces to make the foundation for the for the ripple. Um, if you, It's kind of deceptive how wide it'll need to be because the ripple is going to kind of bunch up that beginning chain, so it'll have to be kind of long, longer than you think it'll need to be for the finished blanket because as it ripples it's going to bend and it'll end up being shorter than you think. So in the written pattern, if you look at the page, the web page, I have a chart with some widths and how many of these beginning spaces you'll need to get the width blanket that you want. I also have several other blankets that are like this that have a beginning foundation that is something other than a beginning chain and that are good for these um, bumpy kind of yarns. So yeah, look at the other patterns and there's several different styles and for several different looks of blanket and, and if you have a big stash of those types of yarns that you'd like to work through or they have a great sale and you want to buy some of it but then don't know what to do with it. Hopefully you can find a blanket in my collection that you like for the yarn that you buy or that you have. But I created these because of my own difficulty of having those types of yarns and I usually would end up knitting them because I didn't like crocheting and trying to find stitches that were hard to, to find. And so I developed this method for myself so that I wouldn't have to, that I could crochet instead of knit. So for the sample, I'm going to start with 13, which is a multiple of 6 plus 1. It's two sixes plus 1. So I have 5, 5. And as I made these, the chains were always on the bottom, the triples were always on the top, and I'm going to stay that way. The, for the first row, I'm not going to turn the work like you normally would do. You normally turn your work over. We're just going to keep holding it just like you've been holding it and start the first row chain five and then do three double crochets in this first space one, 
two, three. Then I'm going to do three double crochets in the next space. Mm -hmm. Two, three. Oops. So they're going over the triple crochets that I made in that beginning foundation row that I made. And there's my chain five and then three double crochets over the top of this triple, three double crochets crochets at the top of that triple. And I'm going to do that one more time. One, two, three, and then I'm going to skip one. And that's going to form the, the base, the valley of our ripple. And I'm going to do three in the next one. And then three in the next one. And then this next one we're going to use to make the peak of the ripple. And so it's going to have two of these clusters of three double crochets with a chain in between. So I'm going to do three double crochets. chain three and then three more double crochets and all of that being in that same space over the top of that triple then I'm going to do two more of these where I have three double crochets and then three double crochets Then again, I'm going to skip one to form the valley again. And then three double crochets. And that one. And then three double crochets in this one. And then crochets in this one. And in this last one, I'm going to work two double crochet two chains and an extra double crochet and that is going to form our end that we're going to work into each time at the end of each row now I'm going to chain five and this time I'm going to turn and I'm going to work three double crochets into that chain two space and then now I'm going to work in between where these clusters of three double crochets are and there's that in between space I'm going to do my three double crochets there one two three And then remember where we skipped before we had skipped the beginning um, chain or the space there. We're also going to skip between these two double crochets, clusters of double crochets, so that that is our valley of our, of our ripple. And I'm going to go and do three double crochets in the next space. And then do that again in the next space. And then that brings us to the peak. And that's where we have those three chains. And so in those three chains, we're going to do three double crochets. 
and then three chains, and then three double crochets. And then continuing along, we're going to have two in these two holes between the double crochets here. And do our sets of three. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then at the valley, we're going to skip that one and do three double crochets in this space. Two, Three, one, two, three, which brings us back to that chain five space that we had at the very beginning of the prior row. And I'm going to do three double crochet, two, three, chain two, and another double crochet. And that row is just repeated over and over and over again to form the ripple. And you can see it's already starting to ripple. And it doesn't really take very many rows to get a very well-established ripple. And it'll continue like that, so I'll go ahead and start the next row. I'll chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and turn, and then make my three double crochet in that space and just continue on until it's the length you want. There is, it can be done and left just like this. Just continue that way and can repeat that row as long as you want the blanket. And you can leave it that way or there are instructions in the written pattern for doing a border around the edge if you want a little bit more finished rather than having the loops. So um, I hope you enjoy that and thank you very much.